any opportunity to get the brand up there, of course. Um, thank you. Uh, I've got to say thank you, Nick, for the enjoyment you've given our family in terms of, uh, <laughs> of Bro and, uh, and the characters. Uh, it, it features around the family dinner table on a regular <laughs> occasion. So I am really sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much the four letter Liar. words, but, but the, uh, the, the cute blue whale. Uh, and it certainly ran through our business as well. We've got, we've got uh, staff in New Zealand, and it gave us another way of communicating with our New Zealand staff, so thank you very much. Um, th there's a few themes uh, that we can talk about today, and the one that I've picked is, is one that gets my hackles up when I hear it uh, trotted out at meetings with the Attorney General's Department and, uh, and other industry meetings where uh, some people have, have uh, repeated this quote, which comes back from the 1920s, I believe, when phonograms tried to compete with uh, free-to-air radio broadcasts of, of music. Um, and this notion of competing with free, and what does it mean? Uh, you know, the, the way it was phrased the last time I heard it was, there's no way any, any industry can compete with free. And of course, it was uh, representatives of uh, the Hollywood uh, creative industries talking about BitTorrent and, uh, and file sharing and that notion of free. But of course, in our world today, lots of people do compete with free. And so I've put together a few perhaps disconnected thoughts, uh, a few bits and pieces that I've pulled together for this presentation to talk uh, a bit more on, on the theme. So what are some of the, uh, the critics of this this plaintive cry, this little bit of a whinge, we can't compete with free. What are they saying? Well, Jonathan Potter, an online character, uh, encapsulates it quite well. I don't think he's an academic by any means, but he encapsulated the phrase really appealed to me. Of course you can compete with free, you've just got to do it better. And I think that, that's a very strong message, it's a very simple message. But also the fact is that uh, as new music strategies, and there's a link that you can't read there, but I think this will be available online somewhere, this presentation, uh, to do a bit more reading. Uh, the economics is very different for online, for the on online environment. You know, the model, the distribution model that a, a lot of uh, content industries use today was built, you know, when Charlie Chaplin was still in movies. And there was a lot of physical distribution, and there's a lot of middlemen as part of that process that were manufacturing, they were distributing to warehouses, they were storing, they were then distributing onto retail outlets, there was shelving involved. Um, all of that physical component of the distribution of content has all disappeared. Uh, and so there is a, a massive reduction in cost of the distribution of that model. So while there might have been an argument for a particular price for a particular product, whether it be a film or a book or a piece of music or some software, when it was physically distributed, that argument is, is turned on its head. So economics does work differently when you're in the digital space. If we then turn to the free model um, and say, how can that be flipped around um, rather than people that are infringing on, on, on rights, how can we use that free model to promote distribution. And we talked about Amazon today. I'm a, a customer of Amazon, possibly a, a reluctant customer, but geez, that little Kindle that my wife bought me for my birthday has generated um, a constant outpouring from my credit card. I have, I used to get books for my birthday, which is near to Christmas in December, and those books the kids would buy me uh, would last me six months and I, I would play my way through those books. I'm buying 60 titles a month at the moment between my wife and I. We've both got Kindles last year. And we're just, you know, we're not paying anywhere near the, the price that you would pay for a physical book. But uh, it, it's generating revenue for that co company that I would never s have spent this time last year. And um, here they, uh, they're very good at um, encouraging their authors to offer short-term free titles to generate sales. And so there's a lot of free books available through Kindle. Uh, they're not continuously free, they're short-term free. And there are people on Kindle in that sort of community, digital community, that are finding those free books, making lists of them, 
and publishing the lists of free. So this isn't, this isn't an Amazon promotion. This is one of their users promoting to other users a list of free books. And uh, somebody used the term, it's not word of mouth, it's word of mouse, which, which I think, you know, in, in our industry, we're very dependent on word of mouth. A satisfied customer is, is worth, literally worth their weight in gold because the cost of acquiring a, uh, a customer in a saturated market like broadband is quite expensive. So if you can get someone to tell their neighbour that they should do business with us, it costs us nothing, that's, that's quite valuable. And so we've got, we've got these guys uh, generating interest in, uh, in other authors that people may not necessarily look at um, because of the free option. And we, we look at a quick case study. I don't know this author, I, I don't read her stuff, but there's a case study there on, on Amazon Lauren Dane, she's got 50 titles up on Amazon. A uh, bit of, yeah, I won't comment. Uh, <laughs> a couple of the titles, three titles down the left-hand side. And if you look in, in September, um, Giving Chase, actually, there was no downloads at all, but she offered it for free in October. 26,000 people purchased for nothing uh, that title of, uh, of hers that they wouldn't have bought the, the month before. And a couple of the titles that she didn't offer for free at $4.40 went from, you know, around 100 titles sold the month before to thousands of titles sold the following month. So by offering a very short-term free offer, she's used this competing with free model and generated revenue for herself that she was not generating previously. And not only that, once you start to sell a lot of titles, like 26,000 copies, put her in the bestseller list. So all of a sudden she's appearing on the front page of Amazon as the number three bestseller for this month. And people are saying, I've never heard of her, but she's a bestseller, maybe I should try her. So it, it definitely works. If we look more at the macro, how's the market going? There was a, um, a, a research piece published last year called The Sky is Rising, and they follow that up with The Sky is Rising 2, which particularly looks at, at Europe. And we see in the e-books market all those green arrows pointing up. Uh, across Europe, the e-market, e e-book market is growing substantially. I'm not going to dwell on that, but it's very positive. E-books is doing well. If we look at music, Similarly, across Europe, from this uh, Skies Rising paper, uh, again, it's, it's all growth, it's all positive, and it's not minor either. And if you look at the bottom left-hand corner at Russia there, probably can't read the figures, but um, music sales have gone from 1.1 billion rubles in Russia to 2.7 billion rubles. And apparently Russia is one of the hotbeds of piracy uh, in, uh, in that part of the world. Certainly, um, uh, the gent from, I'm trying to remember his name, from, uh, from the online gaming, uh, Valve Software, Gabe Newell, is, was uh, criticised heavily when he said he was going to take his, uh, his game, his online gaming offer into Russia because he said that it, they will eat you alive. They're just going to uh, pirate your stuff. You'll never sell a thing. Um, in fact, he's doing very well and it's his strongest market. So. This whole idea of, uh, of competing with three as being an, an impossibility is, uh, is looking a bit shaky. If we look at the, the movie sector, again, this is uh, the, the US market, and it's pulled again from that uh, skies rising. And we can see that already had some comments about the growth of Netflix. And it's not so much the growth of Netflix, which is great, but it's the growth of legitimate content being sold to a market that may not have had easy access to it in the past, competing with the freebies. And uh, the green columns there are BitTorrent, and you can see the, the BitTorrent volume of traffic on the, on the uh, American network is declining. It's, there's still a lot of uh, illegitimate or unauthorised content being shared, but it is going down at the same time that the legitimate content is going, off, is going up. And a couple of isolated stats in that respect. What happens when you put the stuff online? What happens when you take the stuff off? 
an online source. A uh, couple of isolated stats, I'm not trying to make this an you know, academic paper, but the ABC, the American ABC broadcaster, when they made their shows available on Hulu, apparently they reported a 20% decline in piracy of those programs. So when they became available, people were prepared to pay for them. Uh, contrary to that, when NBC removed their movies from iTunes, again, apparently they reported that the increase in piracy um, was immediate and it was around about 11%. So, you know, the, there, is, there is a link between availability and competing with uh, free, in, in the sense, the, uh, the unauthorised sharing of content. And as that uh, first slide said, it's really about doing it better. And my favourite, uh, I didn't realise that this, this uh, comparison to the bottled water industry was so large, it was something that I thought I'd invented and it was a genius, stroke of genius when I, I popped into my head and I used it in a, in a conversation. But um, bottled water, you know, in the main, uh, bottled water is pretty much what comes out of a tap. I mean, sure, you do get your premium um, gassy water and stuff out of the Alps or wherever it might be. But um, there's a lot of bottled water that is the only difference, the primary difference at least, between what you get out of a tap and what you buy in the store for two, three, four dollars is the packaging. And people willingly pay for it. It just goes out the door. And that's an old stat from the US, but $15 billion competing with three in that the US market. And in the Australian market, apparently, um, we're expecting you know, continuous growth in this market, and it's a $600 million annual market at the moment. So yeah, you can compete. You can compete with free. So back, back to the point, uh, really just a, a point to, to generate a bit of conversation. I think this is the most important message I can leave you with, so this is my final slide. It's, it's a strategy. You know, competing with free is a strategy. You can use it as, a, as an option yourself in distributing content to paying customers, but it's not a business model. Sure, I don't think there's any point in trying to just uh, compete on a, on a level footing by giving away the stuff. That's pointless. As um, Tim said, people are looking to make money, pay wages, employ people, develop an industry, and, and that's very important. But it, there, it is an effective strategy, and uh, I, I think um, it's important not to just dismiss the simple facts that uh, <laughs> I think uh, one of the speakers on the panel first thing this morning, uh, again, piqued my interest, was that y you shouldn't assume creativity when you're talking about Hollywood, even though they probably pride themselves on their imaginations and their creative output. Um, when it comes to business, it seems to be a very slow process. They are nervous laggards, as we would describe our, some of our customers, rather than digital extroverts in this space. So, sure, I accept um, the world is moving on, but I think the internet's been around for 20 years now. Uh, Napster sort of fired the first shots on the free uh, distribution, digital distribution model. Uh, 20 years later, there's still a lot of people nervously lagging behind the rest of the market. Thank you.